Sometimes when finally actions are met by their justified consequences, perpetrators break down, mentally and some even physically, or maybe even in some other definitely unique ways. In today's video, we will be going over a list of 10 of the craziest reactions that convicts gave after receiving life in prison. Number 10. Esteban Carpio Esteban Carpio is a life sentence prisoner who was found guilty on the 2005 murder of a police officer. On July 30, 1978, Carpio was born in Boston, Massachusetts. On April 17, 2005, at Providence Police Headquarters, he was found guilty of killing Detective Sergeant James L. Allen of the Providence Police. He received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. A detective exited the third floor interrogation room where Carpio was being questioned by the Providence Police regarding the stabbing of an 85-year-old woman, leaving Allen alone with Carpio. Using Allen's gun, Carpio killed him with two shots. He then leapt out of the window, and 45 minutes later, police caught up with him. Carpio arrived at his arraignment in a mask, his eyes puffy and red, and his family was yelling claims to police violence. During a press conference at the time, Providence Police Chief Dean M. Esserman stated that Carpio's injuries were brought on by his leap from the building's third floor and his struggle with law officials. Number 9. Jaleel Smith Riley On August 11, 23-year-old Jaleel Smith Riley entered a guilty plea to aggravated murder and attempted murder. However, he later withdrew his plea against the counsel of his attorneys. Smith changed Riley's heart was rejected by Hamilton County Common Pleas Judge Charles Kubicki on Wednesday, and he gave him a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Smith Riley lost consciousness after hearing his punishment and fell to the ground in Kubicki's courtroom. After being lifted to his feet by police, Smith Riley interrupted Kubicki. Smith Riley allegedly pulled Martin out of the driver's side, searched his pockets, and then shot him in the head. Martin recovered from his wounds. Number 8. Danta Wright in the Washtenaw County Trial Court, Jermaris Ellison, 19, and Delrano Gracie, 18, were both given sentences of 15 to 40 years after entering guilty pleas in relation to the shooting death of Jordan Clee on October 4, 2016. Judge David Schwartz punished the teenagers after hearing from John Clee, Jordan's paternal grandfather, and Karen Clee, Jordan's mother. In July 2017, Danta Wright, 18, of Ann Arbor, was the third minor to receive a sentence of 25 to 52 years, to which Danta simply smiles. Even when being read very deep in heartfelt statements from the victim's mother, all he does is sit and smile. Antoinette Carter, 38, the mother of Wright, claimed that Clee's passing had a negative impact on her family as well. She said, I'm sorry for her loss just as much well as mine. My son was supposed to graduate this year too and it's just bad all the way around. She stated that she thought her son was innocent and that the case should have been taken into account her son's mental health issues, which she did not name. She thinks that she probably had a mental disorder as evidenced by his grins during the sentencing. She claimed that he approaches life with a smile. Number 7. Lucas Kendall A security guard at a club in Miami-Dade County who was accused of shooting one man to death and another inflicting injuries in 2012 was found guilty on Friday. A jury found Lucas Kendall, 29, guilty of murder and attempted murder in the shooting that took place in the parking lot of Club Lex, a well-known strip club on Northwest 27th Avenue in June 2012. He now faces life in prison. Kendall represented himself in court and justified a shot by claiming self-defense unknown was the date of the sentencing. Because he made that decision of representing himself, the jury didn't get the full picture. And if they would have had the full picture, I think their verdict would have been different, public defender Carlos Gonzalez said. 29-year-old Kijuan Byard died in the shooting, although he lived Michael Smathers was disabled. According to reports, Kendall claimed he heard one of the men declare they were going to kill someone and spotted the male smoking marijuana inside a car. During the court proceedings, Byard's father would be the one to react and eventually had to be escorted out of the courtroom. He need to be laying no, no mental hospital. He need, he need to go to prison, man. Number 6. Ryan Stone A Colorado was sentenced on Friday to 160 years in jail for the high-speed chase that was broadcasted live on television after being found guilty of robbing three cars, including one with a four-year-old boy inside, according to the prosecution. According to a statement from the Douglas County District Attorney's Office, Ryan Stone, 30, was found guilty in April of 11 charges, including attempted manslaughter and first-degree assault for wounding a police officer who tried to stop him. Stone expressed regret for the 75-mile five-county crime wave that occurred in March 2014 and was carried live 
by a Denver television station's helicopter to Douglas County District Court Judge Paul King. The judge heard from Stone's family members during their testimony on Friday, but the judge didn't seem to believe them. In the tapes, Stone laughs at the pursuit he gave the police and brags about the media coverage it garnered, contrary to the tears shed in court. Number 5. Jordan Fuss A man who was drunk when he caused a 2014 collision that killed a 6-year-old boy was given a 14-year prison term on Thursday. Jordan Fuzz, 22 of Davie, was visibly shaking when he and his family approached the courthouse. For killing Santiago Geraldo, the prosecution asked for a maximum punishment of 15 years in jail. Fuzz's counsel pushed for a lighter punishment, saying that his client is so repentant that he has thought of committing suicide. In court, the Geraldo family sobbed as the defense urged for a lenient punishment. Fuzz apologized to the family during his testimony. I'm so sorry, he said. I wish it was me. Fuss's attorney said he knew that his client was going to prison, but he asked the judge to show mercy. I would give my life if it meant bringing him back, Fuss said. Number 4. Antonio Barbo On Monday, August 12, Antonio Barbo, one of two teens charged with killing an elderly woman in Sheboygan Falls, was given a life sentence with a 36-year parole eligibility period. On June 24, Barbo entered a not guilty plea to first-degree intentional homicide in a Sheboygan County courtroom. A plea bargain included that for allegedly using a hammer and hatchet to bludgeon Barbara Olson, 78, to death at her Sheboygan Falls home in September 2012, Barbara and Nathan Pape are accused of first-degree intentional homicide. I know I don't display my feelings, but that doesn't mean I don't. I took away someone's mother, grandmother, sister, or friend when I had no right to do so, and because of this one decision I made, I've damaged so many lives, said Barbara. Number 3. Manson Bryant in 2018, a jury found Manson Bryant, 35, guilty of robbery, kidnapping, and using a firearm during an armed break-in at an inhabited trailer. He and another defendant were charged with breaking through the window of the residence, robbing the resident and keeping him at gunpoint. Bryant had the opportunity to speak for himself during the March 2019 sentence hearing. I made a lifetime of bad decisions, Bryant told Lake County Common Pleas Court Judge Eugene Lucci at the time. And those bad decisions have caused pain to a lot of people in my family. For that, I am truly sorry. Brian claimed that his drug addiction had influenced many of his choices and that he wished to maintain his sobriety. But when upon getting his sentence, he reacted differently. Number 2. Tony Farmer Police in Louisiana are looking for Tony Farmer, a once promising high school basketball player who was jailed in 2012 for abusing his ex-girlfriend in Ohio. After receiving a complaint regarding an incident that was captured on a doorbell camera on April 17, police in Kenner, Louisiana issued a warrant for his arrest on Friday for felony domestic violence battery, according to police spokesman Lt. Michael Cunningham. Farmer received a three-year term after entering a guilty plea to kidnapping, felonious assault, and robbery. Farmer, who was dressed in an orange jumpsuit, passed out while the judge was reading the sentence. Tens of millions of people have watched a video of the incident, and it has since become a viral meme. Number 1. Jacob Matthew Morgan A 17-year-old autistic boy who killed his toddler half-brother after setting fire to his home openly wept in court as he was jailed for 15 years. Jacob Matthew Morgan cried and prayed as he pleaded guilty to starting the blaze that burned 14-month-old Joshua Hill to death in March 2015. The teenager's family from Rock Hill, South Carolina have stood by their eldest son since his arrest and his mother, Julie Hill Dover, protested his innocence in court on Tuesday. We have always believed in his innocence because we know our son. We know the evidence against is horrible, but I know in my heart that my son, my oldest son, is innocent, she said. He loved his brother and all he ever wanted was a brother. He got to enjoy his brother for 14 months, which is not long enough for any of us, but it's the tragedy, she added. Well, that concludes today's list. Comment down below if we missed any other crazy reactions, and we'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.